Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome back to my shop. Today, I am I'm waiting on molding lines to come in for this machine here so I can make the flooring for the house. So while I'm waiting on that, I'm gonna hop on another little project here and put together this, uh, this welding table. So welding table has been on my list of things to kind of add to uh, my stuff for a long time. I have the, the sawmill bed, which is a very nice kind of welding platform. It gets you up off the ground and it's, you know, six by 16 feet long, nice bed flat area to work on. It's fantastic if you want to weld up an entire trailer frame, for instance, or any other large project. Like back when I built the saw, I welded the, uh, the carriage directly on the bed, which was super nice to have that work area. But it does kind of lack when you get into, you know, smaller stuff. You don't have a whole lot of opportunity for a jigging or a fixturing because you're really limited to the spacing on the bunks being two feet apart. So for small stuff, you know, I was, I've been relegated to welding on the floor, which it's not, it's not very efficient, like for your body or for being able to clamp and jig and fixture things. So it's, uh, it's kind of not fun. So weldtables.com had a uh, Thanksgiving sale over Thanksgiving where they had 10% off of tables. So I ordered a table. It was around a thousand for the table. And then of course you buy all the accessories and stuff. So I bought a set of legs and some clamps and additional uh, riser blocks and fixturing accessories and things. So I spent around uh, two grand on the, uh, the stuff here on the pallet. So the table that I went with is the fab block and that is a thicker, beefier version of their welding table. I guess the, the ribs are six inches thick. So the table top thickness is six inches. So it's got a little more rigidity and uh, whatnot to it. The hole spacing is all two inch holes and then the holes extend off the side of the table too. So you can fixture and clamp things to the side as well as the top of the table. So it's kind of like if you're a woodworker like me, it's kind of like a split top Rubo or just a Rubo workbench in general where the, like the front face of the whole bench is a clamping surface. The same thing is true here. The whole perimeter of the table is a clamping surface that you can use to help clamp up and jig up your things you're welding. So if you're not familiar with how these tables go together, they are essentially a torsion box. So you have the skin, which is the top of the table, and you have all of these uh, webbing pieces, which are ribs, and the matter of these ribs holding this uh, skin, it causes this thing to be to be very stable, it won't really change or warp or distort. Uh, it resists distortion because of the beam strength of those ribs and the skin tying it all together. My assembly table is built very similar to this. So this whole product is all uh, laser cut out. It's all tab and slot. So everything should uh, sort of just fit together. One thing I did do already was I took a look at the, the skin to see if it has any natural uh, inclination for dishing or anything. And uh, currently this thing is kind of cupped. I have it oriented so the bowl of the cup is here, I guess. <laughs> so when we suck the center in, the outsides will pull that will stay some tight. That's supposed to be easier than trying to force the outside perimeter down to the, uh, the ribs. So I'm, I already did this wrong. <laughs> because these slide together. So the short ones should go on first because the long ones kind of lap over them. So that is all the ribs all just fit together and you can see the distortion in the top. It's distorted like this and like this. So if you look down in there, so here's a nice little gap here. So we need to pull the top 
in towards the ribs and close that gap to make sure that the actual top ends up flat. But if you look towards the outside edge, you can see how those ribs are actually making contact with the, uh, the top plate. So the middle just needs to be sucked down to that plate. These ribs being laser cut and all those cuts being straight off the laser are what make the top actually sit flat. So, clamping time. <laughs> now since this is a welding table with all the holes, you can of course use uh, some fixture clamps to actually clamp all this stuff together. So using the clamps does work, but you gotta have a lot of them. I only bought uh, four of them. And it is kind of awkward to clamp on just this little quarter inch piece here with the whole clamp head. So you can use uh, some tabs or in the instructions, they also specify some U-bolts. You can buy similar tabs directly from them as part of the kit that, you're, that you order. These are ones I pulled off of the surfacing machine that I have out in the barn. These are what hold the cross members into the 8020 uh, side rails. And then I have some of the little pieces that go into the A20 that allow you to bolt things on. I had some extras of these. So these actually span these holes uh, perfectly. Somehow that worked out just fine. So I'm able to just kind of use these. Um, I did buy some U-bolts as well in case I need them. But the problem with buying all this stuff was I was like, I don't know when I'm ever going to use these again. <laughs> so th this allows me to at least borrow some stuff and then put it back and not have, you know, things I don't need kind of laying around but these things allow you to bolt the uh the ribs directly down to the top and i'm just going to go around and install some of these things kind of everywhere basically anywhere that there is a penetration of the rib through the uh top we'll kind of see how that goes these things don't need to be you know cranked down or tightened down you would probably end up distorting something but they are there to just make sure that those ribs are fully seated into the top. So this, uh, this might be overkill, but uh, I don't really care. I have uh, some kind of clamping on every single one of these. This is not, who didn't tighten this one? <laughs> these ones are all good, I think. Okay, so I got one that's not clamped, but otherwise I have clamps on all the webs and you can see that the, uh, the top is fully seated against that cut on all the webs. So this should be all kind of ready to go. Uh, they say the next step is to tack all of the, uh, the web pieces together at all the intersections. So I'm gonna tighten that one last one and then I'll go through and weld, tack weld all those intersections together, and then we're supposed to flip the table over and uh, check it for flat before welding the top to the webs. I fed the wire straight through the holes. <laughs> So I spent a little time with the straight edge here, taking a look to see what we have kind of going on. And it looks like there is a bit of a curve in the forefoot direction. Across this way, it's significantly better. Let me just take a quick look here. It seems consistent though, which is kind of weird. 
So right here, this is a 14 thou feeler. It's, you know, it's pretty much dead on all the way across until we get to like right out here, the very last, I don't know, three inches or something, it just drops off. Same kind of thing here. It's like tight all the way across and then just starts dropping off kind of here, right when you get past this last rib, which is right here. And again, 14 is, this side's a little better. 14 is barely fits right at the very end. So at least in this direction, we have that much deviation at the very end. So it's kind of dropping off across this way. Let's go here. This way is much better. That's like nothing. <laughs> There's a tiny little gap towards the end here. It kind of have the same thing going on. It's just got a little bit of a, of a hump there in the middle. It's 7,000 fit. Six thou. So we have a six thou dip right at the very end on this one. So half as much. But like that's, I would say it's pretty much nothing. Let me grab a one. Okay, the thinnest feeler I have is one and a half thou, 0 0.04 millimeters. So I got a little bit of a belly here. It's tight here again. A little belly here. And it kind of drops off again. A little bit tight here. A little bit of space there, some space here. Yeah, so I think there's like a small high spot right here around this tab, and then it kind of drops off and then it gets high again around this tab and drops off. I think for what I'm doing though, this is, I mean, I'm used to welding on the ground. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like the stuff I'm doing, I'm not going to the moon. I'm really not that worried about this much deviation, but I wanted to just at least show so everyone has a good idea of what you can expect with something like this. And I don't have my bolts like cranked down. I have them snug. So I don't think the, um, the bolts are causing the top to deflect. So diagonally, we, I think we have a bigger amount of deviation. Let's see. How does diagonal look? Yeah, diagonal looks kind of worse. Again, towards the outside, it's fallen off. Middle, it's tight. We start falling off here. Tight, tight, a little bit of a low spot. Tight again, and we start falling off. So we got a little bit of a hump thing <laughs> in the middle there. So two kind of things or two kind of thoughts at this point. For one, I'm fine with this. I think this is well within the tolerance of things that I need for the stuff I'm making. I'm not making anything super precise yet <laughs> and the other thing is we don't have the side pieces on here yet so i'm thinking that maybe once the sides are actually on here that might help to kind of bring the um the perimeter up a little bit and get rid of some of this dip but um i think real quick i'm going to go through and do all my tacks so all of these connections can get tacked and then we can uh kind of reassess i'll probably remove some, if not all the bolts at that point, and then we can start looking at putting the, the side pieces on and seeing what that does to the flatness. So that is all the tacks. So, I'm going to remove some of these bolts because I want to use them to attach the side pieces. Get the sides attached. And we'll get those tacked on and 
see if the uh, table shape has changed. So before I tack these sides on, let's see if that did anything to the flatness. Let's check through here again. Looks like it's the same. Let's see if this side's the one. This side is still better, or at least this direction is better. I'm actually tight all the way from here to about here, and then it starts dropping off over there. I'm fine with that, but I know some of you will be wondering <laughs> where the other flatness ends up. So we'll check it again after it's fully welded out. If there's any sort of uh, warping from the welds that make it worse or better, We'll, uh, we'll find out. So I'm gonna go through and tack the sides on. It looks like I'm gonna need to add some clamps to the corners to pull them completely closed. But uh, otherwise, a few tacks. And then I think we have to flip it over again and put the, the feet mounts or the leg mounts on. And then we can weld it completely for real. Okay, now with those in there, they can get, uh, actually they get welded fully because after these are welded in, we'll flip this thing over for the last time and weld everything for real. So that's what they say to do next is to actually fully weld these so they're completely done. <laughs> that one. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of a troublemaker, that one.
So I pulled all of the uh, the bolts and fasteners off so this thing would sit in sort of its uh, normal state. I got my last little check here with the string line and I'm checking for twist here. And uh, I, <laughs> I don't think you can get a better uh, no twist situation than that. These strings are absolutely perfectly touching. I'm not having to really, I don't have to tweak anything. So one of the things I saw online with these type of tables is a lot of people asking, well, if you don't have anywhere flat to build them, how do you build it? I don't think you actually need anything particularly perfect to build this thing on. Like I, I did this on a set of forks and this thing is, there's no twist in it. So I think just the nature of, you know, the laser cut ribs and everything, it's so self aligning that I don't think you're going to have a whole lot of problems. I don't know. At least that's my experience. I got, I'm, <laughs> I'm still within what I think is fine for my applications as far as the tolerance on flatness goes, but uh, I still have that hump in this direction here, or at least towards the outsides. So I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm going to start uh, burning in these welds a little bit and uh, get them through that hopefully as quickly as possible because it's like absolutely freezing out here. <laughs> so this is the uh, the wintertime welding project this year. You know, in the past we've had larger projects like the bandsaw mill and then my trailer in the dead of winter in Minnesota. This is just a quick weld all these tabs in and hurry up and get back inside. <laughs> That's why I've been tacking this thing uh, inside. The, uh, the temperature right now is uh, negative 7 Fahrenheit and the uh, feels like is like negative 15. So it's this is the coldest I've ever shown me welding in. <laughs> so I'm going to run through this as quickly as possible. With the, uh, the tab welding, you don't want to go like crazy ridiculous on those because uh, the ideal like place is just enough weld to hold everything together, make it sturdy and rigid, not fall apart but uh, not going so far as to uh, cause distortion to the table. So I'm going to be fairly conservative with this and not put too much heat into the actual metal, um, hopefully keeping distortion to a minimum. But this thing is so rigid with all those ribs that I don't think that's, that's really as big a concern as it would normally be. The other thing with this is you don't want to go over crazy with the fill because you don't really want to mound the tab slot area with a weld because you have to grind that back flush with the tabletop anyway. And while you're doing that, grinding that, you'll probably end up with a dish in that spot. So ideally it would be just, just below the surface, filled up and uh, not overly hot, I guess. So here we go. There's like a lot of, there's a lot of welds. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm done. All right, normal handheld camera won't turn on because it's too cold. So I, this one's from inside, so it's warmer. That camera's about to run out of battery because it's so cold, it's like sucked down, I don't know, 50% of battery in like, I don't know, 15 minutes or whatever. My, my hood was fogging up the whole time. I don't think the wire was feeding very well because it was too cold and it couldn't do much of the, the radiuses on the bends and the, uh, and the gun line there. <laughs> I'm freezing. <laughs> I, I'm going to pack up and bring us to the side and uh, we'll go from there. I did lie though. This has to be flipped over again because the, uh, the legs, the leg kit gets installed or gets like mounted up or whatever with the, uh, the table upside down. So I got to flip this thing over again and bring it back inside. But at least now that it's welded solid, I don't have to be as gentle with it, which is kind of nice. That's definitely something to consider if you're looking at doing one of these things is the, the, uh, the ability to flip around as you're working. This is a 4x3 and I don't know, like one person safely probably can't do anything bigger than this unless you start getting into some like mechanical help and like maybe like a chain hoist or some kind of, some kind of rigging to flip it over. Because uh, rolling over by hand bigger than this I don't think would be possible or really smart at all. Okay, let's open up the legs, or base, or whatever you want to call it. The fab rack <laughs> is what they call it.
picture. This is what we're building. <laughs> so we have two different kind of mounting plates. We have the, the corner mounts for the legs and the, uh, the bolt holes, which will bolt this to the table. And then we have the uh, little caster mount plates and the steel, the tubes are laser cut with uh, some little tab things again. So everything kind of like nests and locks together. Is that right? I guess that's how that goes. Yeah. Because then his legs are supposed to go through into the holes. Is that what it's supposed to do? Like that. There we go. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, whatchamacallit, these things, the little sticky bits pass through into the uh, outside holes. It's pretty slick, actually. <laughs> Okay, and I think these just slip in here somehow. Like, do they just go in here like this? Oh, that is slick. That's cool, they just like fall in there. That's it is slick. So I guess this is why it has to be assembled upside down because this would be kind of annoying to do uh, the other way because they have to go this way into the legs. So it, well, gravity works in your favor like this to get these to slide together. It's really slick though. So I got the legs all kind of loosely clamped up here to make sure that everything is fully seated. I dropped some, uh, some hardware into the holes just to make sure those plates are gonna be in the right enough spot that the hardware can go back in or can go in and be bolted after this is all done. Uh, everything is looking nice and square. Check that all. Now that everything's kind of just dry clamped together, actually squared up perfectly. And uh, so now, I'm gonna tack all of these pieces together, all the legs, all the cross members and those uh, plates. And once they're tacked, I can pull the clamps off and then fully weld um, all the connections. So a little more welding. I'm gonna do that on the fork next door. <laughs> it's so cold. <laughs> All right, let's see. Pull these off and just make sure it stays square. And we can weld it and get cold. Still. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got my uh, welding bottle switched over. That's a weld with no gas. <laughs> That's how it should look. <laughs> Very different. So this has a lot of porosity. Uh, you can see all the like little divots and holes and everything in there. 
it's kind of hollow. And that's what, uh, you start seeing that as you're welding, you're like, yep, something's wrong. So if this is actually something important, I would have to grind that out and re-weld it, but I'm not too worried about it because it's just a welding table. I'll, I'll just put a pass over top of it and make it a little prettier, but I'm also gonna install the caster mounts, which just go on like that. A, little, a few little welds in here, and those will be attached as well. Okay. So there is the table just about ready to go. I will have to uh, grind back or touch up some of these welds. They're just a little bit proud. So this one's a little high, so that needs a little bit of a kiss down. I can definitely tell that I was rushing <laughs> to weld this up. It's like, some of them are okay. Some of them are like, I'm pretty sure my hood fogged up for this one because I started here, I went this way and then came back in. So there's a, uh, a few welds need some touch up, but kind of the nice thing is you can you can touch up welds as you go as you're working on other projects. So I'm not not too worried about the welds that aren't all that pretty or nice, but you know it's it's, it's holding together just fine. So lastly, for getting this thing set up here in the shop, I'm going to uh, drop my new vise onto the uh, onto the table, and that should be pretty close to just about it for this thing. So I'm really excited to finally have an actual workspace for the messier things that I do. Having this thing be able to go outside and come back in is going to be fantastic and super convenient and just make the fabrication process, the small fabrication process stuff that I do, quite a bit more enjoyable. So this is a welding table, but it is also a fixture table. A fixture table is a welding table, but a welding table is not necessarily a fixture table. So I thought I'd just share a little bit about what a fixture table is for those of you who haven't seen uh, a table with a bunch of holes in it before. So maybe you need to make like 10 or 20 or 100 of this exact part. You have specific dimensions you want it to be and you want them to be all perfectly identical. So you can get uh, fences and stop blocks that all have the index pins in them that allow you to utilize the grid pattern on the table to make super precise and super repeatable parts. So I don't have any of those things yet because I didn't buy any because I wasn't sure like what all I was gonna need. I'm gonna wait till I actually make something to determine what that's gonna be. But pretend this has a bunch of index pins in it. You could drop this little fence piece in here and that would be a stop that allows you to hold this piece in exactly the right position. You could have a stop for the side piece here. Again, utilizing those pins that can be clamped there. You can clamp this guy here. Maybe you wanna have like a stop block because you need this length to be exactly perfect. So if this piece gets cut a little short, you know, it comes this way a little bit but then your final welded piece is exactly the same size. It's uh, kind of a fun system and allows you to really set up and fixture your work pieces to get very accurate and repeatable parts. So that is a new welding table, fixture table, work table, whatever you want to call it. Very excited to have this finally. Uh, next time we'll do a quick project on here. We're going to make a replacement belt guard for the planer. So that'll be nice to finally have a surface that is not the ground to work on. So that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the welding table or anything here in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking or whatever. Work on something.